In this tutorial, I'll show you how to embed a sound source into a 3D scene that can be loaded into a web browser. Before watching this tutorial, I recommend that you watch my tutorial on the Blender speaker object. In this tutorial, I'll be attaching a speaker object to a jet aircraft. I will also set up an animation that will demonstrate the Doppler effect. First, I'll show how to use Blend for Web to play a sound file from a speaker in a 3D scene loaded into a web browser. Move the cube to the side in the Add menu, Add Speaker and click the speaker properties. Click the open button to link the speaker to a sound file. To play the sound on the internet, it's easier if the file is already in a web sound file format. Select the file and open. Clicking play, the sound plays, but very quietly. It is quiet because of the distance between the speaker and the user who is at the camera, to hear the sound at full volume, set the attenuation to zero. Change Blender Render to Blend for Web, and we get a lot of additional settings, including speaker behavior options that include background music, background sound, leave the behavior on positional sound, to play the sound file, click the Scene Properties, click NLA, and click Fast Preview. And the sound file plays. Click the Speaker Properties button. Next, I'm going to demonstrate a Blend for Web setting, enable the Doppler effect. To demonstrate the effect, I'm going to use a file that I made in a previous tutorial, you can download the file from my website or watch the tutorial and make the file yourself. The file is an animation of the speaker moving and the volume decreasing. The sound file is packed into the Blender file. Click the button to unpack it. Choose the Write File to Current Directory option. Clicking the same button, we can now change the sound file. This file plays the same note for 10 seconds. I'll show you where I got it from at the end of the tutorial. Change Blender Render to Blend for Web and click Enable Doppler. The Doppler effect is the pitch of sound decreasing as the sound source travels away from you and the pitch increasing as the sound source comes towards you. To be able to hear the effect, turn positional sound off by setting the attenuation to zero. Drag to make the timeline window bigger. Drag on the diagonal lines to open up a new window and make the new window an NLA editor window. Click the push down button to link the cone action with a new NLA strip. Press the tab key to go into tweak mode and change the window to a dope sheet window. To make the effect more noticeable, the quicker the speaker moves away, the larger the decrease in pitch and the quicker it comes back, the larger the increase. Press S to scale and scale the keyframes so that the end keyframe is at frame 60. Travelling the same distance in a shorter time, the speaker will move faster. Hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to pan so that the end frame is in the centre and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in. Press S to scale and move the end frame to frame 61 
which will give a smooth transition as the animation ends and loops back to the start. Change the window back to an NLA editor. Click the plus to open up the properties for the strip. Scroll down and click sync length and press the tab key to toggle out of tweak mode. Set repeat to four. The sound file is 10 seconds long. I'm going to match the length of the animation to the sound file. At 24 frames per second, 10 seconds will be 240 frames. When the strip is repeated, the last keyframe and the first keyframe are the same. If both were included, the animation would keep freezing. So only one is included. That is why I set the length of the action to 61 instead of 60. Click the Scene button, click NLA and Cyphic NLA, and click Fast Preview. The scene loads in a web browser, and the sound that was at a constant pitch now goes up and down. Next, I'm going to attach a speaker object to a moving object in this example, a jet aircraft. The starting point for the next part of the tutorial is a file I made in a previous tutorial. You can download the file from my website or you can watch the previous tutorial and make the file yourself. In the Add menu, Add Speaker. In the Properties window, scroll down and set the parent of the speaker to the jet plane and set the X rotation of the speaker to minus 90. Clicking play, the speaker follows its parent. Click the speaker properties button, click the open sound file button, go to the folder where you have the sound of a jet engine. I'll put a link to where I got this one from in the description below. Select the file and open. Now you can play with the settings to get the effects that you want. You may want very realistic effects, or you may prefer less realistic but more dramatic effects. The attenuation is one of the more important settings, and the default value will give a realistic effect. But for example, with a display of stunt flying, you are likely to be a long way from the sound source so the sound will be very quiet. To make sure you hear the sound file, you might set the attenuation to zero, turning the distance effect off. Doing that, you might say, well, you may as well change the speaker behavior to background sound. But if you do that, you lose directional sound and the Doppler effect. As a creative compromise, I'm going to set the attenuation to a lowish value of 0.2 and I'm going to click Enable Doppler. The thrust from a jet engine is very directional, but jet engines are pretty noisy all the way around. So the settings I'm going to use for directional sound are an outer cone of 180, an inner cone of 90, and an outer volume of 0.5. The length of the sound file is less than the length of the animation, so click Cyclic Play. To pack the sound file into the Blender file in the File menu, External Data, Automatically Pack, click and click Fast Preview. And the scene loads with sound. I can definitely hear the effect of direction. I'm not sure if I can hear the effect of distance or the Doppler effect. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the start files and the end files for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the link. 
Thanks for watching and goodbye. If you're still watching, this is where I got the single note test sound file. I set the frequency to 200. I set the level to its maximum, which is zero. I set the duration to its maximum, which is 10. And I left the sample rate as it is. I downloaded a WAV file and I used Blender's video sequence editor to convert the file to a web file format, which was OG, using the Vorbis codec. Thanks again for watching and goodbye again.